Um, <laughs> in this paper, we will talk about um, communication and mobility in southeast Angola. So basically, this part of Angola. Um, this case study is part of a larger program uh, of the African Study Center in uh, Leiden, the Netherlands. Uh, we have several case studies um, from various African regions in which we uh, look at the relationships between mobility, communication technologies, and social relations. Um, the case studies uh, are all so-called marginal um, regions with a high degree of uh, mobility. And in our program, we, um, uh, we focus on qualitative methods, so more on life histories, uh, in the sense that we take people r as a starting point rather than the technologies. And I hope that this paper at least partly shows this. Um, okay, so this is a more detailed map of uh, Southeast Angola. This region was called the lens at the end of the earth. In Portuguese, uh, in Portuguese the as terras do fim do mundo. And it was regarded as one of the most remote areas of the whole country. No colonial official wanted to be in, uh, <laughs> in uh, southeast Angola. Um, and if they went there, if they were placed there, uh, many of them went mad. Um, also, in terms of missionary enterprise, this area is an exception because in most regions in Africa you see a development of missionary activities or you see uh, the importance of Islam, but this region had hardly any missionaries, only as of the 1950s some missionaries came to this region. And this had important uh, consequences because um, as there were hardly any schools and hardly any health services, and hardly any uh, churches and roads and administrative uh, centers, etc. There was also hardly any possibility for a local elite to develop. So, um, what is there now in terms of elite is uh, usually not from the area itself, or it was. Um, it, it, it are people from the area that were raised, that uh, had their education in Namibia or Zambia. In this region, mobility plays an enormous role. Even the, the very question, where are you from, is translated in uh, Gangela, the local uh, uh, cluster of languages. It is translated with the word Donga. So if I put the question, where are you from, it said Donga, and this word means river. And then the answer to the question, where are you from, is a name of a river. So it's fluid and not one locality. Moving, connecting various places as a river does. Uh, the villages were moved from one place to the other. Uh, it is a, an, a, a, an agriculture of slash and burn, so people would move from one field to the other. Uh, people uh, visited relatives for Len length of time, uh, they went to live with uh, their, uh, their relatives for several periods of time. So it's traveling, this is a society in, 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 in which um, the um, concept uh, coined by James Clifford, dwelling in travel, is very apt. Um, mobility in itself in this area does not need to be explained. People, indeed, they, they often moved because they had to, uh, if there, were, uh, there was war or slave raids, diseases, etc. But also because, I mean, it's a very sedentary uh, approach to always explain mobility. Um, in pre-colonial times, people mainly moved on food or by canoe, uh, but during colonialism, uh, 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 a basic road network was built, uh, and although this imperial grid was mainly used by, um, where you see people mo uh, moving, 
although th this was mainly used by colonial uh, officials, it was also sometimes used by uh, local people, mainly um, also in s during the colonial era in search of work. So um, people moved to Zambia, Namibia and South Africa to work on the mines from this area. Even Portuguese in this area was not very widely spoken. If there was a second language, it was uh, usually it was English or Afrikaans and not Portuguese. So a high degree of mobility. The war um, which came to this area in 1966 uh, interfered with these patterns of mobility. <coughs> Um, the war did not stop at independence. In 1975, Angola became independent, but as many of you might know, the war continued with a civil war um, and lasted until 2002 when longtime UNITA leader Jonas Savimbi was killed in combat. And this region, the southeast, oh, was at the front line of the of the war, it was one of the front line so zones, especially because Jonas Savimbi, the, the leader of uh, UNITA, he had established his capital in a small uh, hamlet in this area called Jamba, and also the Battle of uh, Quito Quanaval, which I mean is one of the most the largest battles uh, on the African um, continent ever thought that was in, in Quito Carnaval is also in this in this region. There's now how Saida, one can enter but you can never leave. So a very encouraging um, <laughs> arrival. Death rates in the troops were very high and the uh, population um, suffered under the violence and the hunger during the war. And during this war the the, the entire uh, uh, dynamics of mobility uh, was changed. People were forced to move, and uh, many fled over the border to Namibia and Zambia. Um, they were ca kidnapped. Some were uh, kidnapped to live with the UNITA guerrillas. Others were kidnapped to live in town. Um, and in, in all cases, whether in exile or still in the country, people had a very difficult position. Um, what was resented in this was not so much the forced mobility or the forced immobility as such, but the fact that uh, people could no longer choose, that they, um, the lack of option, that they were f forced to stay in one place or either forced to, um, to move uh, to other areas. They wanted to, to move as they pleased and to stay as they pleased. And this is also um, uh, why the peace is so valued um, in this area. Um, peace is associated with the possibility to move. Peace came um, to Angola in 2002. As I said, uh, Savimbi was killed then. Um, and uh, this area, probably, uh, this is of course speculation, it's very difficult to, to give proof, but probably because uh, it, it used to be a, 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 a UNITA area, this area was chosen to uh, be, the, be the darling of development by the Angolan state. Um, instead of uh, the lands at the end of the earth, the Angolan state has chosen the name, the lands of progress. So very different uh, ideas. And, and several programs have been developed to counter the uh, uh, impoverished, impoverished state of this region. Uh, but still, I mean, there's no, uh, hardly any um, uh, facilities in, in the terms of uh, education, health, transport, communication, etc. Um, after 2002, this area changed a lot. Um, so IDPs from Luanda, from the capital, they came back to this uh, area. 
people from Zambia who had been, some had been living in Zambia for, for 20, 30 or 40 years. Namibia, they all came back. Um, and uh, as I indicated, people were marched in from the <coughs> highlands of Angola to this region. So you see a very complex um, um, yeah, new kaleidoscope of settlement uh, and, and changing population, uh, not only during, but also after the war. Um, and these complex sets of networks, of relatives, of trading partners, of friends, etc., they are extremely important. We tend to think uh, in our uh, regions of a community as uh, localized, but in this area, um, this is not at all the case. Um, Uh, one brother may live in, uh, in Namibia, another may be schooling in Bintuk, uh, an elderly grandmother in uh, Kwandu Kubango, etc. Et 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 so even a nuclear family, but especially on the level of community, we should be thinking of strings of people rather than uh, geographic uh, space. Mobility, it means that you can start cultivating a fil field it means that you can gather firewood. Uh, you can maybe visit a clinic. Um, and as indicated, in this region, mobility may be even more crucial uh, because of this history of mobility. Um, community is not a luxury. It is of vital importance because that is what a, com a, a community consists of. Um, so obviously, if we want to understand um, this, we cannot limit ourselves to the interpretation of technology. We have to relate such technologies to the history of mobility and community construction. So what I have been saying so far should not be regarded as an introduction. It is an integral part of doing research on communication technologies in this region. Now there have been, uh, in this region, there, has, there, there is a history of, of communication technologies, however limited. Uh, there is, for example, letter writing. Um, colonial of officials uh, used to exchange um, with the, their families and, and friends through uh, postal services. And also after colonialism, at least uh, from Menonge, one especially state officials, would write letters. But now, and this is, this is important, I think, uh, many people said that uh, the time of letters is over. People no longer uh, write letters. So um, this is what the post office of Menonga starts looking, looking <coughs> like, like now. Um, in terms of um, um, transport, as indicated, there was a, a, a basic colonial uh, road network built. Um, but now, I mean, it's nowadays, it's still very difficult to use these roads. Oh, this is the airport. It's, it's very difficult to use these roads because many of them still have mines and because of the lack of maintenance, um, they become impassable through, uh, during the rainy season. And even in the, in the dry season, many of the roads you can only pass at, at, at a speed of 20 per hour. Uh, cars are used predominantly uh, within the safe confines of, of town and then again largely restricted to state officials and uh, NGO personnel. There are a few public transport um, vehicles now. There is transport possibility, possibilities, thanks, um, between the capital Menonge and on to uh, Namibia and Quito Guanaval and some other places. Uh, for longer distances, it is really much safer to use uh, uh, aircraft. It is uh, recommendable to take a flight. But 
obviously also this is only affordable to state officials, NGO personnel, and researchers like me. <laughs> so flights are, are relatively safe, but maintenance and corruption are problems that are plaguing the, uh, the flight companies. It, it may be expected that um, air transport will become less important over time as the road network is opening up, but it's still uh, very, uh, very difficult. Um, also during the war, there was a, a, a very basic radio system, although this was destroyed in, uh, after 1992. And during the war, it was mainly used for propaganda reasons by the two parties involved, and so by UNITA and MPLA. Um, also now, uh, the local radio station, there used to be a local radio station, but it's still inoperative, and uh, you can only receive the Radio Nacional. Uh, and even that is limited to the, uh, the, the, I think, 20, no, 30 kilometers from Menonga and 10 kilometers from Quito Guanaval. So it's, it, the range is, is very uh, limited. The same, um, and even to a larger extent, holds for television and also for uh, the uh, press, uh, the newspaper, Journal d'Angola. Um, now, as to telephone lines, actually, there was never much of a fixed line in this region. And now there is um, a, a attempts to, uh, the, 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 some of the companies, they opened a uh, cell phone uh, range in uh, Menonga and Quito Guanaval. And at the border, people used uh, the connection with uh, Namibia. So they have Namibian uh, uh, um, cards, SIM cards. The internet is, is uh, very, very limited and very, very expensive, if it is working at all. And this time, this was a cyber cafe, but <coughs> nothing worked there. So as is clear from what I said, uh, no communication technology is adequately functioning in the southeast of Angola. Um, there are some attempts to turn this area into lands of progress. But um, so far, it remains a cry that is far from reality. During the interview, interviews, one person said that moments of crisis, that they give origin to ideas. So people try to be highly creative in, their, uh, in, the, limit, in the limited means that are available uh, to them. And uh, given the fact that families and communities are so dispersed, communication is regarded as a real necessity. Um, it, given the traditions of mobility and networking in this region, we should not see this as emergency only. Uh, in these societies, mobility is normalcy. It is not an exception. So hence the requirements of communication technologies may be different than in sedentary societies. And development programs, they may well um, have to calculate this in. We argue here that technology alone is not enough. One needs to know how, uh, how people use such technologies and why. The current state program of defining progress as simply dropping off technologies clearly falls short of such in-depth knowledge of the history and cultures of Southeast Angola. And we think it's high time to listen to local definitions of progress. Thanks. Thank you.